this little greenhouse is here. I'm so excited. I love the look of the wood. And the clear polycarbonate. This is all the boxes. Five of them. Starting to break down the potting bench. It's a sad day. I'll miss it. It's been a wonderful potting bench. Cole getting her workout in. Who needs a gym, right? <laughs> People call me old. <laughs> Look at that. Show us your muscles. Come on. Let's see that bicep. You didn't see them when I lifted that? Well, yeah, but yeah. You know. <laughs> Were they too tiny to see? <laughs> Ah, oh, you gotta be kidding oh, me. Oh, no, the big boy. They're both, well, maybe they're not. Maybe that's the problem. Oh, I'm trying to lift them both at the same time. <laughs> there you go. Because I have my spinach this morning. <laughs> Popeye. <laughs> 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 okay. Let's try again. Another, like, real quick cut. Huh? I just pan that in. Yeah, so here's the, uh, <laughs> our pallet potting bench, which it was actually in worse shape than we thought. It's really, uh, I'm just like pulling it apart. It's that uh, rotted underneath. Um, but we got a lot of good years out of it. Uh, probably within, I think this year it was probably gonna start to really fail on us. It was already sagging in the back and uh, the way it's coming apart with the rotted wood, it was not long for being here. My daughter came over, my youngest daughter, Danielle. She came over and she helped me and the two of us ladies put it together. 
Um, we had mad drill skills the other day, which is good because that's my least favorite tool and I'm horrible with it. I'm much better with miter saws, table saws, almost every other piece of equipment than I am a drill, but we did, we did really well with it and we got it built. Um, and I'm really happy with it. The, I would say that the one thing I would say is this is the sheeting is really thin. So over time I will probably come over top of it with a thicker millimeter of polycarbonate, um, especially these trees. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the branches came down and um, cracked the panel. So we already have one cracked panel under there um, just in shipping. I've just kind of gotten used to nothing seems to get here without damage to it anymore. Um, I'm not sure what's going on, but it's either packing or the way they're being delivered or I'm not sure too much weight on them. But yeah, so we did have some damaged pieces, but hey, I'm just talking it up to character. It, um, it kind of has a look like it's been here um, with the whitewash and things like that that I really like. And I've been looking for this style greenhouse for a while um, for this little area um, because we couldn't get the big one that we wanted. Um, so this is kind of going to be a temporary thing where I can start some seeds and just on rainy days, I'll have somewhere I can go in and work. It's pretty hot in there right now, but, um, yeah, so it has two windows on both sides. Um, and obviously the door, and this is a Dutch style door. Oh, you don't even need to open that where you can open um, the, the top, but leave the bottom closed. Like if I don't want the chickens coming in with me, you know, or if you have a dog or something like that, you can, you can open that. Um, you can put a chain or a hook and eye or something to catch it if you want. Um, it just kind of stays there, but you know, it's nice. There's tons of airflow in this. I was really surprised to have four windows. Um, I'll probably put something like a wreath or something like that, um, up there to, make it make it cute you know me i'm going to decorate it so i just really haven't had time to do um anything with it so yeah so i'll show you inside it's going to be a small tour because it's just a tiny little greenhouse um i think the dimensions were supposed to be six by six but they turned out not to be it is technically a rectangle but it's close to a square the the dimensions they gave us were completely wrong. That's why it's not up on the platform like it was supposed to be. That's been moved over. Um, I'm gonna be building um, my son, Conyer, an outdoor aviary, aviary area. So he'll have a really cute cottage aviary um, for when we're out in the garden all day. He'll be able to be out. And um, I'm hoping this entire yard, um, once it's all fenced in, will be safe enough for the chickens, willow or rabbit um, to run around. And then so JC can, can watch them from inside his aviary cause he's fully flighted. So of course he's small. We're not gonna, we're not gonna let him out. Something will pluck him out of the air in a heartbeat. Um, so, but he'll, he'll be allowed to be outside, which will be nice for him. Um, since he's a parrot and he likes tropical weather. Yeah. So I'll, I'll show you it, um, inside, give you a little tour and see, you see what I've been doing in there. Not much. I haven't had much time because I have this big project and anything you see around it, just excuse our appearance right now. We're under construction and I'm hoping this area is gonna look really cool when I get it done, but it may take a while, just like all projects. It's a big area and there's a lot of buildings going up. So, um, but it's gonna be really useful um, place and a great uh, pet area. So it's gonna be nice. All right, let's get started. Okay, so it has, like I said, double windows on this side and on the opposite side, which is really nice. And I've gotten hook, hook and eyes that I'm gonna put on because it's so windy here. But this is so nice, you can open it right through so it can just get the breeze right through it, which at this time of the year, everybody knows that that's nice to have. It has two huge windows on the top. It does not have automatic openers, but you can buy those after factory if you wanna, if you want them. Uh, the whole roof is uh, plexiglass right now. Um, I'm hoping to change it over to polycarbonate. Uh, we'll see. 
here's a look at the couple um, windows. And like I said, they're really large. Um, they're probably exactly a third of the entire interior of the um, building. So that's really nice. Um, just the same as the amount of windows on each side is probably actually, I would say more than a third on the sides. So excellent ventilation. I have, um, I just put some elephant ears, tall planters because the chickens will be running around um, eventually when they get bigger. I'm not really worried about the kind of plants yet because they're way too small to be free ranging yet. Um, we have hawks and stuff in the area and we have a lot to do as far as stringing up strings above and things like that to make sure. The trees are gonna be the primary protector. This is not really an area um, a bird of prey is gonna to want to come in, but if they're hungry enough, they'll go in anywhere. Um, I just put some Creeping Jenny in here. Um, in the end, I don't care if they get it and they destroy it. It will have um, eventually a cage around, whatever we have here. I'm hoping these grow tall enough that, um, and I will have a guard here so they can't jump up. But these are self watering containers. I got them at Lowe's. Um, I'm going to go in for the black, like hardware black and white look pretty much everywhere now. Uh, it's just so classic. And then just adding greens and maybe some Cape May blues or something like that to it. This color, I absolutely love of this mug. My daughter's got me this mug. Okay, it, it definitely gets warm in here. So I think it's going to really be nice in the winter and heat up even though, again, most of our garden is part shade. So that's just something we deal with. All the white reflecting and everything, it's, and this is just totally, the wind is already catching my windows a bit um, and closing them. Let me open that up. Um, so, as soon as I get the hooks and eyes, then I'll be able to keep them open. But um, I had, I had made this for Valentine's Day for the for the tables and the mantles, and these are just the dried hydrangeas um, from my Incredibles. Um, and I had just lightly spray painted um, in just very muted tones and made garlands. I made one for the whole. Um, uh, mantle and then I made one to go down the center of my table and cost me nothing. Oh, and this is the miscanthus grass um, in it, in the back and on the edges and stuff. That's miscanthus. Um, so I use those. Um, so this entire thing just sticks, you know, vines from the yard um, was free. So I didn't know what to do with it and it was too pretty to just get rid of it. So, and, but they're delicate, you know, because they're dried flowers. I didn't know where to keep it. So it worked out great that I could put it in here. I might put another one up above there since I have two. So we'll see. Yeah, I might, that one's longer. So I might flank it across the top just to have some prettiness. We'll see how long it lasts. It might mold in here because humidity will build up um, once the plants get breathing and everything. So we'll see. But for now, I thought it looked cute and I can always change it out and put whatever, um, you know, if I I don't know that I'll, it's too small. I'm not gonna have like hanging baskets or anything like that, but I may have like, um, you know, my lemon tree in here for a bit and only bring it in when it really gets cold outside. It depends how warm it is. This is gonna be so easy to heat, which I do like about, it. and that's partly why I wanted a small one for out here because the big ones can be hard to heat. Whereas this one, a tiny little greenhouse heater, oh my gosh, it'll probably be too hot in here. So I may try that and see. Um, yeah, so right now I just have started. Um, I'm gonna get, get some bunching onions going um, and maybe some Swiss chard, things that may grow in the summer, we'll see. I, most of my seeds, unfortunately, are cool season because I grow so many greens and um, things like that, but I do have more radish se seeds and stuff like that but I didn't get in my seed order this year, so I am really bad with seeds. It's gonna be hard for turning over my crops this year. Um, just got so busy with everything else, all these projects and you know my other, my work duties. So yeah, so I just made up my own um, seed starter mix um, with the stuff I had around. Um, I, had, I have like a ton of perlite, um, 
I had some bonsai soil that I mixed into. Anything that'll lighten up your soil makes great seed starting mix. You don't have to spend money on those expensive um, powder versions. Cocoa Core um, um, works really great. Um, um, if you have peat moss around still, then you know that also will lighten up the soil and you can make it really light. So I'm just filling them up right now. Um, but yeah, so it has, I love the shelves in here. These are really thick, nice. Um, a shelving came with it, so that was really great. Um, yeah, so like I said, it's just a real mini tour. Um, I have some of my um, pots in here, which will be a real nice place to have them. They won't freeze and thaw. So I'll probably line up all my clay pots all underneath here for the, for the winter. Um, I technically could grow in here if I wanted in the winter. I might, I might try some greens and see if I can kind of get, bridge the gap in my greens from December to February. Um, so we'll see. That might be an experiment we do this winter. But we'll, but um, yeah. So there's no window on the back of it. Uh, just the two over here, two over here, and the two huge ones in the ceiling. Oops. I think that it's closing on you. It's, it's been really windy the last um, few days, um, and today it's just light breeze, but we're expecting rain um, probably within another couple hours. It was spitting most of the day, and then, oh, we're going to put up, we, our, our fountain pump went, so we're going to put up a video of maybe what to think of when you get them, that, you know, when you do set that pad and things like that, that we kind of thought of, but easier access would have been nice. So I'm going to do a video. I'll show you what we had to do this morning um, because that was an unexpected project. But yeah, so I hope you think it's as cute as I do. I'm, I'm really over the moon about it. Um, like I said, I'm expecting it to maybe, I'm hoping it'll, it'll go six years. If it goes more than that, then that'll be great. I have it on four inches of stone. Um, instead of the base that I was planning on putting it on um, so that all the water should drain away. This is a very dry area anyway, so that shouldn't be a problem. The only reason I wanted it up on the, on the box was because it'll make it give you more headroom um, because I keep clocking my head on the doorway, so you have to kind of duck to get out of it. And I'm, sh I'm small. I'm petite. I'm only five foot three. But I keep forgetting about it because I almost, almost clear it. So I get working in here and I turn and I walk out and boom, hit my head on it. So that was the one thing because it's better to step over than it is to clock your head. But obviously there's plenty of, of headroom in here for me, um, even for Ray. It's, 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 it's nice and tall. So um, for working inside it, you just got to remember to duck out of it. Ray will see it like at his eye level. I don't see it at my eye level um, that that doorway is low. So yeah, but anyway, I just wanted to show it to you. I'm sorry we don't have anything done around it. Um, I'll give you kind of a quick scan of the state of, of the courtyard right now. Um, it's all really good and things are moving really fast and this is all going to be like a, a really nice i'm hoping a wonderful pet sanctuary for for my pets the chickens my son conyer and my bunny um i might even get her a little a little um hutch tiny or something or at least a little like um round log or something for her to go under if she just wants wants her own privacy from if the chickens are pecking or whatever. She's very fast, so I don't think they're going to catch her. But um, but I'm, I'm hoping to be able to let her go too in here and she doesn't try to dig out. I don't think she will. She's very, very mildly tempered. So we'll see. But um, yeah, so thanks for joining me on this tour. Um, like I said, I'll, oh, maybe I'll just give you a quick, um, a quick rundown of what's going on and why why the courtyard looks like such a mess <laughs> and that it's it's but it's really an organized mess <laughs> okay i'll show you okay so here's the back of the chicken coop and that leads if you go around it that leads out to our driveway and my french doors to the den 
Then of course there's the, the, the carriage house over here, which will eventually become a potting shed and probably some other things will be done in there because now with the chickens and stuff, I may make a feed station for them. Over here, um, this is going to be a frame to the, the Avery will be right back in that corner um, for JC. And I'll, I'll flash up a picture of what the aviary, aviary will look like. Um, but that's going to be filled with soil. And then there will be plants in there that um, the chickens will be allowed to eat, scratch up, whatever they want to do. It's, this is going to be their area. They're, they're going to be able to do whatever they want in here. So um, we'll put chicken-friendly um, stuff down low. So that'll kind of be somewhat of a diggy box around JC's aviary if it's big enough. I'm not sure, but his aviary will sit up on this platform. There'll be 18 gauge wire all the way at the bottom of it. So the roots of any plants will have to grow through that wire to make sure that no snakes or rodents can get in there. Then, of course, this area leads to leads out to the kitchen garden and all along here this will be a gate here if you can vision that there will be a five foot see-through fence just with um the wire cloth the gate also hopefully see-through but maybe with a little more structure we'll see and then of course the fencing will be cut um continued down here there'll be a gate here and a gate over here so that'll be this side. And then all of this will be cleaned up. This is his this is his aviary. Aviary, it's in boxes under here and I still have to build it. And then next to the greenhouse, um, if you go in here, that's where the compost bins probably will be along with the trash recyclables and um extra cans which that's the extra cans all sitting along there for yard cleanup and stuff like that um this is just a pot rack that i had a, i had made a witch out of for halloween that i still haven't dismantled i'm pulling everything out of that storage area and getting rid of it i'm thinking of putting a large hydrangea there or some other plant i tried to get star of jasmine to grow up because I'm going to, here, let me lift that up a bit more. Up here, along there, behind the greenhouse, I'm hoping to make a green wall with either ivy or star of jasmine or some kind of vine um, that I know I can control. Um, I know I can control ivy. I've been controlling ivy for 20 years on my property. I even had it out of control on my property. I found it easy to pull out and it never sprung up again. So we have very sandy soil here and I think ivy does better in clay soil. So it's not quite as, as, as rough. Um, we more have to keep up with it on the trees so that it never gets to the canopy. Um, we do have one tree where it's gotten that high because Ray clipped it, but he missed uh, quite a few um, because it's thick, it's easy to miss. Quite a few um, tendrils that were still going up. So yeah, so this will be hopefully greenery behind it, if you can vision that. And then maybe a large hydrangea here or something. Just green right in that caddy corner because we need this area to walk through. So I'm hoping to have flagstones all out in front of the greenhouse and then down the center of the greenhouse. I like having the stone, it'll be easy to clean. I can just get a blower and blow it out the door. So I like the stone for drainage. That's gonna keep um, the, cause this is all wood. This is all, I, I think it's Swedish wood. Swedish wood is, obviously it's not real, real thick. So, you know, we don't want any water hanging out to rot it. So a lot of air circulation is really good to keep it from rotting. Yeah, so that's basically it. Um, so I'm just doing um, some seed starting and, um, oh, I may over in this area where I have a pot with a rose in it right now. This is New Dawn, the rose. You can see she's just going out of bloom. 
So in this corner, I was thinking possibly, well, see, I'd like to make a caddy corner table here with that same whitewashed wood to match. And then I can put my, my uh, soil bin there, like to come outside when it's too hot in the greenhouse. Um, but that's going to give a launching point for the girls. So they could jump up here and just jump over. So that's probably not gonna happen because I'm thinking I'm gonna put like wire along there to, to just stop any kind of shenanigans out here. Um, but my new dome rose, she did bloom really nice. You can see all of her, I just have to deadhead her. She'll, she'll bloom all summer long. To give you some perspective of where we're at. Okay, so this is the back of the chicken coop over here. I moved my raspberry bush, you can see, oh my goodness. I have been getting a good couple cupfuls of rat, um, of berries off of, off of her every single day for the last week. But so this is the chicken coop. This is our um, large um, arbor entranceway um, on the west side of the garden and that leads out to the hydrangea garden and if you look through there you can see our fountain cherry so if that gives you any idea where this courtyard sits in reference to the hydrangea garden up front to this is kind of the connection to our back gardens um, which will be the kitchen garden then the woodland garden then the patio garden and then the herbaceous garden and then our lawn area so um it kind of all flows okay so that's it um for this uh small tour <laughs> there wasn't much to tour but um i wanted you guys to see it um because you know we're really excited about it it's it's going to be very useful um especially oh early spring you know, when I'm just itching to get outside and I, I just having all this all over my table, my kitchen table, I do all most of the entertaining. Um, I just had, I think two or three barbecues in the last month, um, for different occasions, Father's Day, Memorial Day. Oh, my daughter, um, Danielle's birthday. I think we have one at the beginning of May. So maybe it was more like four. Um, parties that um, I had so it's not really practical in the spring for me to have seeds all over the table and it kind of stresses me out trying to find somewhere that I can put them without and it's dirty it makes a mess um, and then I have to kind of manage you know the spraying the water and things like that and it, it just everybody knows who does seeds inside knows it can make a mess so this is going to be a big help to me yeah, so thanks for joining me. Um, I hope you guys have a great day.